Hey guys, it's Jason here. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to Not an Unboxing. If you've been following me on Instagram or watching any of my videos, you would have seen the TLR tuned Typhon in the background. I even think I used it in a video I did uh, comparing the size of the Skeeter to a few other RCs. And basically guys, I came home one day from work, it was sitting there and I just wanted to get into it. So I cracked open the box and checked it out. Now, one thing I wanna make straight guys, before we even get into the buggy and into this video is this. I did not buy a TLR tuned Typhon. I bought a roller. So I didn't want the RTR electronics. I have those in other vehicles, they work great, don't get me wrong, but I knew I wanted to do my own thing with this. And hey, that's what a lot of us do. So to spend the extra money to buy the V5 RTR, I just thought, hey, you know what? I can use that money to, to buy electronics and kind of customize and do what I want. So that is why I went with this. The whole racing, the whole TLR tune part really doesn't mean anything to me. And I would have preferred if Arma had released a EXB Typhon, I, the black chassis, the red aluminum bits, 7075, all that kind of stuff. Now, the TLR tuned has 7075 chassis, 7075 shock towers, 7075 hinge pin carriers, and I believe a few other parts. So again, that is why I bought this buggy. Now, you probably already noticed that the buggy is no longer sitting on the stock wheels and tires. The first, I would say, 30 seconds to 45 seconds of that coming out of the box, I immediately pulled the stock wheels and tires and I put on those. They are Proline MX Badlands on split six wheels. The wheels are fairly old. I've actually had them brand new sitting in a package for a long time. But I picked up those tires, guys, probably a few months ago when I knew at some point I was going to be getting a buggy. And I'd found them, they were the unmounted ones and that was exactly what I wanted. So what we're gonna be doing in this video guys is going over the TLR tuned Typhon. I'll show you guys some of the key components, basically what you're kind of paying for. Like I mentioned earlier, I, I didn't really, I didn't set out to buy the racing buggy, the TLR tuned racing buggy. I just wanted a roller. And I had mentioned something about not wanting the stock electronics. What I meant by that, and I should have been a little bit more clear is, I've got a few sets of those Firma 150s, those 2050 KV motors in other armors that I have. And I've wanted to upgrade the electronics in some of those vehicles. So for example, the fire team, it came with the Firma 150, it came with the 2050 KV motor, but I did want to go to something a little bit bigger. I wanted to go to something more like a true max eight, maybe even a 2200 KV motor, something a little bit, you know, even physically bigger. So even though I had mentioned that I wanted to tune this and I wanted to use different electronics, I more wanted to actually tune those other vehicles and possibly move the stock electronics from either the fire team or the Outcast 6S EXB and drop those into the Typhon. Now, I also have a Castle Mamba Monster X8S or whatever it's called with a 2200 kV sensor motor, which I'm also going to be trying in this. So you're going to see a couple of different systems. I'm going to try to do very um, simple runs. So I'm going to you know, at one point when I get one of the systems in, I'll go out and I'll, I'm going to rip it around, but I will take, you know, like a quick speed pass. And then I'm going to try the other systems too, just so we kind of compare all three systems and to see if, hey, you know what, spending the big bucks on, let's say that castle system is worth it going, you know, compared to something like, again, the Firma 150, that stock system that's in so many Armas. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get some of the stuff cleaned up on the counter and we're going to get into this buggy. All right. So first, I don't think you can talk about the TLR tuned buggy without mentioning the body first. The pink and the purple and the white look crazy. And to be fair, guys, it was one of the things that was standing out to me. So besides from it being a roller, I also just really liked the body. And at one point when I was looking at a used Typhon, um, I actually had gone on eBay and had priced out this from the chop shops because I really did want the body. It just does, um, I don't know, it gives it just a very cool look, guys. It, it looks impressive. It looks different driving around. If you've seen my uh, SSTE, you know that I'll, I like purple and pink. I've got the purple and pink Rustler as well. So this was sort of a no-brainer. Getting the body off, you can see all the 7075 goodies, the chassis, the rear and the front shock towers, which are five millimeter. You have 7075 hinge pin carriers. The steering Ackerman plate is 7075. And again, all your hinge pin carriers, rear shock tower. There's all these adjustments. So that is a lot of adjustments on the front right here there's actually a whole bunch of different inserts again for changing all your positions i honestly would i'm not even going to pretend guys like i know what i'm talking about with that i do have an idea but 
I would be mumbling through it and bumbling through it that there's just no point. Those are your big 7075 upgrades. It's kind of disappointing that they didn't include a type of EXB bracing. So on the EXBs, you have those red uh, front and rear chassis braces. On the TLR2, these are like a you know composite plastic. It would have been nice if right out of the box, it would have came with the same color aluminum. So this kind of bronzes type color chassis braces. I think at this price and being that this is a roller, it would have been cool if they would have included both. So if you were going for an extreme lightweight version of the buggy, you could be running these ones. But hey, if you were going for that more basher buggy, which is what I'm going to be going for, you could have easily just swapped on the aluminum braces. So I find that kind of a bit disappointing, but oh well. I also don't even think you can actually buy them. I don't think Losi or Arma has made the chassis braces in this color. So you'd have to go with something like the Red EXB or an aftermarket company like Vitavon or something like that. You have what looks to me, guys, like the same top plate as the Creighton. You have an aluminum servo mount, which is cool. This is a 23 tooth servo horn, which is a bummer. But if you watch one of the videos of the fire team where I think I was showing the mudslingers, I had shown you guys this servo. It's an OMG 55 kilogram servo. This is going into the fire team. So that S652, which is in the fire team now and many other armas, is going to be dropping into the Typhon. So I, I'm okay with that. I think that servo will be adequate for this buggy. I'm not going to be racing it. I'm not going to be going around a track. So I don't need super speed for turning or anything like that. I think it'll do the job. All right, you have Arma's usual aluminum motor mount. It's a sliding motor mount. Loosen these screws, boop, 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 to adjust your pinion. One thing you want to know is if you buy this buggy, when I was opening up the box and moving it around, I could, I could hear something rattling in the box. I just assumed it was a tool, something that was just kind of bouncing around. And when I started removing the buggy from the box, I had noticed a screw. And this whole mount and the two screws were all just kind of laying in the box. So just be aware of that when you open yours up that you're going to want to pay attention to one if the motor mount is still sitting here and if it's not that your screws and your actual mount itself is probably sliding around and floating around in the box all right guys like i mentioned at the beginning of the video i'm going to be running a few different sets of electronics in this buggy to test out the firma 150 with the 2050 kv motor a hobbywing max 8 with the 2200 kv motor and a castle mamba x 8s with a 2200 kv censored motor I do feel like the Firma system will have a more permanent home in the buggy. Being that this isn't a heavier vehicle, that should be actually adequate for this. I purchased the Max 8 combo, the 2200, actually for the Habao Hyper MT Plus 2. That vehicle right now has the Castle 8S sensor 2200 KV system in it. That system, I want to move into the fire team. I run the fire team with those mudslingers. I like running that truck on the trails. So I think having that censored combo in that vehicle would be really, really good. And then having that Max 8 with the 2200 KV in the Habao would be awesome. Which, like I just said, would leave the Firma 150 and the 20 KV for this vehicle. I'm looking forward, guys, to kind of running it. I'm going to do hope unfortunately guys probably a few different videos meaning i'm going to go out sometime with one system tested out i'll go out again with another system and test it out there'll be individual videos for all those and then at some point if i can remember not to delete all my footage because that's what i tend to do i'll try to keep some of the clips themselves showing the speed and all that stuff and then i'll do a recap video actually showing all three different systems and how they performed and if there was a speed increase and all that kind of stuff I'll be running the same pinions. All that stuff will stay the same. I'll be running the same batteries. Now, speaking of batteries, inside this buggy right now, I have one of the Gen's Ace Tattoo 4000 milliamp 6L pack. This is what the box looks like. So again, it's Gen's Ace. It's their Tattoo line, 4000 milliamp, 95C discharge rate, 6S pack. There you go. That's what it looks like, not in the buggy. And I originally got these for my Habao Hyper SSTE. I run that vehicle fairly light. I have the light and chassis, all that type of goodies on it. So I didn't want to put one of my big giant 6S packs in it that were really going to weigh it down. Plus, physically, guys, I don't even know if the battery would fit under the truck and buggy. And the same goes for this. So that's one thing you guys have to be aware of when you're buying something like a Typhon, uh, Typhoon, Typhon, however you're supposed to pronounce it. 
or any 1-8 scale buggies in general, due to the body style and the low profile buggy body, you have to watch your battery. Again, this is a six cell pack, it's 4,000 milliamps. So yeah, the milliamps guys are a little small, so my runtime is a little bit less, but it does have that 95C discharge rate, so it's gonna have tons of power. And as I'm gonna show you guys right now, the body fits with no issues at all. You can see the body post sticking out back here. You can see the body post sticking out up here. So yeah, there's no issues at all. And that's even guys with the connector sitting the way it is right now. So you guys need to know that. I feel like it's a, you know, a lot of people buy buggies and then after they realize, oh, the, the two 3S packs that they had don't fit or that single 6S they don't fit. Um, I'm going to leave you guys a link to this description, to this battery in the description, just so if you guys are interested, if you're buying a buggy and you want a 6S battery, this will fit no problem. All right, so there it is, the Arma Typhon TLR Tuned. Overall, guys, the buggy looks great. It looks very impressive. As I mentioned, I did wish that it came with the aluminum chassis braces. Uh, as well as, guys, I'm not a fan of the wing on this buggy. Uh, from what I can see, it's not just the wing, but it's also the wing mounts I have to change if I want to go back to the RTR wing style, which I'm pretty sure I'm going to do. But for the most part, hey, I'll deal with that. It's not a big right, guys, deal. The last thing I want to mention is sort of funny. So I have wanted a buggy for quite a while now. I had one. I had a few Typhons years ago. I had, I think, a V2 many years ago. And I've just been, you know, kind of gotten back into them watching videos and stuff and thought, hey, you know what? I'd like another buggy. Now, one of the buggies that really caught my interest was the Habao Hyper VS2. If you're new to the channel, I have a great relationship with Habao. I have my Hyper MT Plus 2, I have my SSTE. So the VS2 was something that I definitely wanted and was going to be getting. Unfortunately, the supply that was coming to North America got stuck on a boat. And every time I would talk to my friend at Habao, they unfortunately just kept telling me the same thing that you know what, there's nothing they can do. It's just it's it's not with the North American distributor yet. So yeah, it was kind of a bummer. So I chose to buy the Typhon. I bought this Sunday morning. And by Sunday night, I had received an email from PDP Comp, which is the North American distributor for Habao, saying, thank you for your payment. Your buggy is on the way. So I, uh, yeah, that was kind of funny. I have gone from no buggies to two rollers uh, pretty much a week apart. So that buggy should be here in the next couple of days. So I should have the video up within a week. I'm really excited, guys, to check that buggy out. I've been watching a few videos on it, even though I can't understand anybody that's done the unboxing so far. But I'll have mine up really, really soon. But anyways, guys, that's it. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a big thumbs up. Subscribe and hit the notifications bell. And enjoy the pictures.